Annie Ersling with Porcura, and I'm here today with Calvin McDaniel, Deputy Director of Government Affairs for the National Association for Home Care and Hospice. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're day two of the um, annual meeting. Mm -hmm. How's it going so Everything far? Everything is going very well. I met a lot of people. They're very excited about the, uh, the conference this year, the changes we've made to education, the general layout. Um, so it's encouraging, and um, we hope to build on that in the coming years as well. Absolutely. So um, tell us a little bit about your role with NOC. Sure. Um, as you said, I'm the Deputy Director of Government Affairs. Um, basically, I work in advocacy yep. uh, from a federal perspective. Um, that's going to include a lot of legislative analysis, uh, meeting with members of Congress and their staff, um, kind of doing education and awareness over what issues uh, affect home care and hospice. Um, we work with um, the state associations a lot nice. um, to kind of help amplify our message. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Yeah, so what is, what is this organization doing to help home health and hospice you know, prepare for where the industry is going, but also to support the, the agencies as they exist today? Yeah, we're in a, we're in a bit of a attack mode right now, um, coming from CMS to the home health and groupings model. Um, they should be finalizing that rule in the next two to three weeks. We're hoping that um, that policy is withdrawn. Um, it's number one priority right now. We're hoping to get withdrawn. Um, if not, we'll be taking other avenues. Um, but really trying to push out communications to the elected um, and other government officials, um, as well as our members, so they know what's happening and hopefully that they can um, contact uh, their representation as well um, and let them know what um, this change will mean to their uh, agency and their business. So what, what do you most want people to know about that new um, grouping model? Uh, well, a few things. The largest is that it's the biggest and most radical change to the prospective payment system since it was put in place in 2000. Um, we anticipate it could be as high as a 15% cut across the industry. Um, there's concern that um, agencies will go out of business and the beneficiaries will lose access to care. Um, so that's the kind of message we've been trying to communicate out and uh, I think people have been hearing it and um, they've been concerned and they're um, kind of helping amplify her message. Yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's organizations of all sizes here. Sure. For a smaller agency that's got so many things to manage um, and fewer people to do it. What advice do you have for them on how to stay abreast of all of the things happening from a government perspective and really how to be active yeah. in the environment? We understand that uh, the short staff, your time's at you know, a premium. You're not a always able to read through the Federal Register, do all that legislative analysis on your own, um, read other um, news outlets for that. So we put a lot of work into doing that for our members, um, doing the analysis, pushing out information as soon as we can, um, as quick and as um, succinctly um, and as applicable to them as possible. Um, so really just paying attention to our newsletters and our emails. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us. This is really, really great to talk to you. Of course, thank you so much you. for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks. And